Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. That is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. And today we're going to talk about the Kaiju Preservation Society by John Scalzi. You might have watched my weekly wrap up where I think I actually did a pretty good review during that, but this is a new release and I've been highlighting new releases. Uh, new release book reviews, so we're going to do it again. <laughs> to start off, this was a palate cleanser for me. It is a fairly short novel about a man who, during at the very beginning of the COVID pandemic, where all the stay-at-home orders are going on, he loses his job and then is offered another one. All he's told is it's a job working with large animals and you will be very much working in concert with them so it is going to be dangerous. So I love how the setting of this book came to be because we all have lived through this COVID pandemic and we all have an understanding of the stay-at-home orders that went into place. We might not all have been in New York City at that time but we all have a shared understanding of what that was like, how that affected us, and affected our friends and family members. So having it set during that time period was a lot of fun. The author himself calls this a pop song. This is supposed to be something fun, give you like some light heart, and then allow you to move on with your day. I enjoy the characters in this. This my husband did mention that it threw him off because it is a first-person narrative, which since I read first many first-person narratives, it didn't throw me off. So we are seeing this all through Jamie's eyes. He's the main character. He is brought into things when he's needed, and that's when he gets the information. Otherwise, it's him and his experience. But at the same time, you can consider this an ensemble book because Jamie can't do everything alone, and he does work closely with the other people who are new to KPS, as they call it. I know I said my weekly wrap-up, one of the things I loved is there is no hierarchy in this book. The new, the people who are new to KPS, yes, they need training because they're new, but they're brought in as an equal, as a peer, not as a lowly intern person who has to work their way up the ranks. So they get to be there and present for anything that involves their department because they are the expert people. And I really enjoyed seeing that turn of view because you don't normally see that in something like this. It was very refreshing and it allowed the characters to fully shine, especially with their own knowledge of how things are going and work. And it's a good view of how scientists work. Because in their training, montage as you call it, where they are talking about like, oh, you know, this is your specialty, well here, here, like they're being given binders of this is all the work that's been done before. And one person was like, oh, well, you know, I'm a geologist. And they're like, oh, here, there's not a lot of, you know, things about genealogy because People don't want to spend a lot of time outside of base if they don't have to because it's dangerous. Everything's going to try to kill a human. And then they also had a secondary thing, field that they were working on. They're like, but this one has a lot more. So you get to see that they have to study what has been done already to continue on the work. I mean, that is their training. It's like, let's learn what has already been done and then we're going to continue doing this. And I like how their society, they have different groups that rotate in and out, but you're, you're paired then together with somebody from the other team. So there's a passage of knowledge. It, it's not like, oh, hi, we're here, and now you guys are leaving, and I have to read, figure out what you were doing. No, there's someone who is always passing the baton on. And I thought that was a really great way to make that fun. It's, it's a great way to do further science, and I like that. And I love that the characters are true to themselves, even when shit is going down. I think one of my favorite lines is the Neve character, as they are trying to figure out a plan, and someone suggests one, and they say, 
this is bad science and I'm gonna be pissed if it works. And I love that because that it has been their attitude the whole time. Like, I want to follow the science. I want to follow the evidence. And, well, we don't have any evidence or science that we can follow, so we're going to make a guess. And they are upset <laughs> that they have to do it that way. Even though it's in Jamie Gray's point of view, it's very much an ensemble book because you're getting to meet all these characters, and these characters have weight to them. And the interaction between them with Jamie matters. And I loved it. So even while the characters shine in this book, you have your dialogue. Most of the book is like interactions between people. There are not going to be long pages of description. That is not this type of book. It's you figure out things while through talking with other people for the most part, which works for me because I like that sort of book. Like I, as I've said before, Scalzi for, for me very much, um, mirrors Heinlein's writing and I like Heinlein's writing so I really like Scalzi's writing and I think in every book I've read by him so far it, it it's just worked for me on the writing aspect the plot for this the plot is if you've never read a science fiction before this is going to be a great plot if you are a connoisseur of science fiction and have read many many the plot is predictable. You know what's going to happen. You you see the setup from the beginning. But the, at the same time, the ride, the writing, the style, the plot is fun. So this is very much, so that's where it comes into that this is candy or popcorn, how, a pop song, however you want to describe it. It's just, it's familiar it's science fiction-y, so it makes it fun. And this is why I don't think it's going to win any, any awards, because the plot is straightforward and predictable if you read a lot of science fiction, which I do. But at the same time, you're going to still enjoy the ride. Something that the author did is he put in lots of references to science fiction books and movies and just culture that you're going to pick up if you are in that world or if you have seen those things. They're discussing this with my husband afterwards. There are things that I hadn't picked up on because I, I'm not actually that well versed in science fiction shows and movies. And he'd be like, oh, and when they talked about this and this, I'm like, oh, I remember when they talked about that. I didn't realize that was a reference to something. There are other things that I did recognize and I was like, oh, that's really cool. I'm trying to keep this as uh, spoiler free because I think this is something that you should just experience if you like science fiction and want to have a good time if you need and the lawnmower started up again Ugh. and then if you just need a palette cleanser from other things that you're reading this is the perfect book to pick up and you get to get immersed in a world it's just it's great it is so much fun. I don't think it's going to work for everyone, but it worked for me. And that's why I am here doing this video to say that if you're like me, like the same sort of things, I think this is going to work for you as well. If you have read this, please let me know down below. Let me know what you thought. If there are other things that you thought of that I didn't say, share those things with me as well, because it's fun to get to talk to people who have read this book because we all pick up on different things. Thank you and have a great day.